Welcome to Automated Flight Week 7, where we will continue with some examples where we look at proportional control. Well, what did the proportional controller look like? Well, we have a reference and an output, which if we subtract them from each other, will have uh, an error, which we multiply by our uh, proportional gain KP, we feed that into our system G, and this way we have a closed loop system. Now, to rewrite our block diagram into a single closed loop uh, form, where we have the closed loop transfer function, we know that in this configuration, it becomes kp times g over 1 plus kp times g. Now, let's look at two systems and see what happens if we have uh, proportional control. Here we have gs is 1 over 1 plus s. Now, let's look at the poles of GS. Well, the poles are the roots of the denominator of the transfer function. And we only have one here, and that is S is equal to minus one. And if we plot that in the complex plane, it is here. If we have our real axis, our imaginary axis, and the origin. So our system is stable. It has an exponential decay. Now, let's see what happens if we add a proportional controller. Now we can simply add uh, our transfer function for g so that will be kp over 1 plus s divided by 1 plus kp over 1 plus s. Now we, we will make a uh, rewrite this uh, denominator so that it has the same uh, denominator as the um, uh, as the fraction in the numerator. So we will re rewrite this where 1 can be written as 1 plus s over 1 plus s. kp over 1 plus s divided by 1 plus s plus kp over 1 plus s. And we see that the fraction in the, uh, in the numerator and uh, the fraction in the denominator share this factor 1 plus s. And this is equal to, I'll write that here, kp over 1 plus kp plus s. What does this mean? Well, we have a, a different pole now. The pole here of our uh, the closed loop pole is equal to s is minus 1 minus kp. So it we see that it has moved up a bit. Well, What's interesting to see from this diagram is what, what happens if we increase k. So if k is zero, of course, then this whole system becomes zero. But let's start with kp very small. Then our pole starts here. And as kp increases, we see that our pole moves more towards uh, um, minus infinity. The system becomes uh, more and more, uh, well, the, the exponential k becomes faster and faster which is a good thing, but our system was already stable. But here we see the effect of uh, the gain on a simple system. Now let's have a look at a slightly more complicated system, a second order system. Um, uh, which example will we take where GS is 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. Now we can factor this out where we, uh, if, if we want to look at the poles, but the poles of the open loop transfer function are equal to um, s is equal to minus 1 and s is equal to minus 2, which we can again plot in our complex plane. Now let's have a look what happens if we add uh, the, uh, the proportional controller. Well, well, we'll fill this out and I'll leave out the algebra. Uh, the closed loop transfer function will become kp over s squared plus, two, uh, no, plus 3s plus 2 plus kp. And now let's have a look at the closed loop poles. Well, we started off well with minus two and one, uh, minus two and minus one. 
But let's look at the ABC formula for this. S1, S2 is minus 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared, 9 mi uh, minus 4 times 2 plus KP. And I'll write this a little bit bigger. So the square root of this divided by 2. If we take kp very, very small, so kp is 0, we end up with these poles. But if we start increasing kp, these poles will not be on the real axis. They will turn into um, complex poles. So what we see is if we increase kp, up to a certain point, these two both collapse into a single point. So if this root is zero, we only have a single point, minus three over two. So this is minus one, minus two, and this would be minus 1.5. But then what happens is as this root becomes negative, this pole moves into the complex plane, and this one moves here and, and it, for certain values of p we will not not only have exponential decay but we will get oscillations as well and we saw that in the previous video uh, where we talked about pushing a car is that we might end up with oscillations for large gains and we see a simple second order system here that if we increase the proportional control that we will end up with dampened oscillations now here we have drawn very, very simply something that is a diagram that will help us uh, track poles as, as we change a parameter. Here we've changed the uh, proportional gain, but we could also do this uh, as we change a spring constant or a damping coefficient and see what the system does. It still, does it still behave uh, the way we want to, where we track the roots of our transfer function. Well, we have roots in the numerator. Well, in this case, we don't. And we have roots in the denominator. So we have zeros and poles. And those are the roots of our systems. And the uh, trajectory they take as we change a certain, certain parameter is called a locus. And we can analyze a system and its response to changing values of a parameter, for example, the proportional gain, and we will end up with a root locus plot. And the root locus plot is a very powerful tool for a control engineer to see what will happen um, if we change a system in a certain way. And it will allow us to see that if we design a system, look at variations within a system, or look at designing a controller, if our system will behave within the parameters and the design requirements we have set beforehand. And here we see that we might end up with behavior uh, that is undesirable.